Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. In the great ceremonial hall of the temple of Ma Chu, the Atef Suten and his council of thirteen are preparing to unveil the Hesiherian talisman, the father of diamonds. Round the walls of the vast chamber are seated the Hesiherian nobles. Helen Gregory and Magra, to be met directly to Suten and Hakeru, are brought in. They stand before the high priest with the Atef and his favorite as the ceremony begins. Tarzan, Darno, and Tom have escaped from the chamber of death and rushing into the vast hall, stop the ceremony. Suten pronounces the dread decree of the Council of Thirteen. It is that Tarzan must fight the greatest of the prehistoric talking apes. The ferocious brute, a fearsome monster, climbs out of the pit. Swinging forward clumsily but swiftly, the hideous features contorted with black rage, the brute roars out his challenge. Back, Dada! With another blood-curdling scream, the ape approaches Tarzan and thrusts out its hairy arms, trying for the bone-crushing embrace which spells death. Don't! Don't! Something! Help him! With the speed of Sheeta the leopard, Tarzan leaps aside, turns. His fist flashes out and catches the monster squarely on the jaw. The huge brute pauses, stunned. Tarzan whips out his knife. He is bigger and stronger than all the others. As Darno shouts, the shaggy ape with gleaming fangs bared rushes forward. Tarzan crouches low, awaits the charge. As the huge beasts come close, the ape man springs straight into the embrace of those great arms. The deadly knife flashes once, twice, again. Killed deep into the awesome monster's heart. Before the hairy arm can close about him, Tarzan slips out of their crushing embrace, leaps high and straight back. A muscular bronze arm encircles the mighty throat, pulls the great head back, back. Once more, the keen blade sinks home into the jugular vein. A fountain of dark blood wells up from the death wound. Slowly, the ape sinks to the marble floor. One last muscular convulsion. The giant hulk is lifeless. your chest. Not mine, Magra. Now, Suten, we'll talk. Verily, O oh, Tarzan of the apes, thou art a mighty man in battle. I would that thou... Mon Dieu! Look! Kira! With a great military escort. And do you see what those men before her are carrying? The father of diamonds. Helen, Magra, come down here with us. Tarzan, that woman is wicked. I feel it. There is much trouble in store for us. Silence, Magra, else Tira will hear thee. Take a man shot, march you. Cat! Silence. Then, my day is done. The people of Hesse Hare have seen the golden disc in which lieth the father of diamonds. They know it is now mine. With it, I become all powerful in the land of the Hesse Hare. Today is an evil day for thee and thy friends, and for me, Tarzan of the Apes. Why, Hello? The Atef was a just, though stern man. This woman, Tira, hath a black heart. 
I fear for thee. Beneath my rule, the land of Hesse Hare shall prosper greatly. My word shall be law. Thou art mad, woman. The story of the rulers of Hesse Hare stands written in the priestly books. Never hath woman ruled alone. <laughs> I shall cause to be burned the sacred writings. Sematuaki hetepu kesta. Surround these men and women, God. Poor Larson was right, Tarzan. This woman has an evil eye. So long as she offers no harm to Helen and Magra, we'll wait and watch. Look, God surrounding the king. This Tira seems to be in earnest. Until I have decided what thy fate shall be, Suten, thou shalt be prisoner in thine own chamber. Thou darest not. The people of Hesse Hare will rise against thee. Not while I hold the father of Diamond. But the Council of Thirteen. They remain loyal to me. Is it not so, O high priest? Answer, Nishim! <laughs> and so thy lost prop is taken from the almighty king. Neshem, here is my offer to the council. Ye will retire to your chamber. I grant ye one hour to make your decision. Either ye serve me or the deep mind. Go and take your former king with ye. Let him hear your decision. My gods follow. Thou shalt pay for this, thou traitress. The ancient gods of Hesse Hare shall curse thee. <laughs> Tiran, why do these guards surround us with drawn swords? I place the diamond in your hands. You promised to let us go. Now keep your agreement. And so I shall, Tarzan of the Apes. But there is much to do in this land of the Hesse Hare. My people come first. He must be patient. Oh, I don't like that, Paul. She's worse than a dozen Sutan. It is enough, my darling, that we are together. Never again shall they take you away from me. Uh, let her have her way now, Tarzan. As Darno says, we are together. And we can afford to wait a little. You will be given quarters where you will await my word. And see that we get it soon, Dira. At the appointed time, you shall have an escort of honor to see ye safely to the jungle's edge when she came. Hakeru! Aye, my queen. Thou, Atan Hakeru, art in charge of these strangers. Thou art responsible for their safekeeping and their comfort. To hear is to obey, O daughter of the sun. Where shall they be lodged? In the Tower of the Sun. <laughs> <laughs> See that their every comfort is attended to. Aye, Otira, it shall be done. Where is this Tower of the Sun, Hakeru? On the outskirts of our share, Tarzan of the Apes. You may see it from here. I certainly don't trust that woman. And I don't like the sound of this place we're going to. Tower of the Sun. My lord, my share, do not look for trouble. We are all together, and that is worth more than any hazard we may possibly have to face. But, Tarzan? Yes. By the way, Hakeru, we are to remain together in the same place. Uh, all in the Tower of the Sun, yes. Do you know, Tom, I am still puzzled over the fact that these strange people here in this extinct volcano speak such good English. Yes, I have often thought of it. Hakeru, how is it that the Suten, Tira, and the High Priest and you came to learn such ancient but excellent English? A score of generations ago, Atan Tom, there descended upon the land of Hezi Hare a great famine. Hundreds upon hundreds died, and those who remained were walking skeletons. Mm, it sounds like a tale of ancient Egypt when the waters of the Nile failed. The Atef of that day was a young prince. His heart was sore, and his spirit troubled, for he was a goodly youth. All prayers to March Shu, the father of diamonds, were in vain. The priesthood, helpless. The rain came not. When he talks, Paul, it's just like listening to King James' version of the Old Testament. Listen. At last, the young Atef, Fato, determined to brave the wrath of the gods, to break the immutable laws of centuries, to journey outside the sacred valley of Tuanbaka. The noble youth made his way to the edge of a great, boundless lake. He entered a house that moved across the face of the waters. He must have felt as you did, Tarzan, the first time you set foot on a boat. Fato came to a country called Angloland. He 
He prostrated himself before the Atef of that country, who was a man of good heart. He sent Fatal back with much store of wheat and grain and strange foodstuffs. He must have been the king of England. Heaven knows how many years ago. And so the famine was lifted, and there was peace and plenty in the land of Hesiharia. From that day to this, a few of the royal house and one noble in each generation have learned to speak this strange tongue in honor of Phaeto and the Atef of Angloland. I'd like to have known this, Phaeto. You and he would have understood one another, Tarzan, without the need of words. Is that the tower, Hakaru, just ahead there? Aye, Helen Gregory, that will be thy home, for a while at least. It's not as high as I expected. Well, here we are. Open the door, Hakeru. We come first to the chamber of the men, O Tarzan. The maidens will rest in the rooms on the floor above. I don't like that idea, my friend. I obey the order of Tira. Here is the chamber. Enter, O Tarzan. But where are you going, Hakeru? I return to the temple, after I have the maidens to their quarters above. As soon as I may, I shall come back with news of what has occurred. Hark thou, Paul Darno. I have not told Tarzan that this chamber door may not be moved from within. But be not uneasy on that score. He may have my word that I shall return soon. Tarzan trusts you, Hakeru. And so he may. I owe him my life. Helen Gregory and Makra follow the Hesiharian noble up a flight of circular stone steps to enter a comfortably furnished chamber above that occupied by the three men. As the door closes upon Hakeru, young women turn to examine their new abode. Below, in their quarters, Tarzan calls to Darno and Tom. Tom! Darno! Come out here! Qu'est-ce que vous avez trouvé, Tarzan? What have you found? Ah, an open circular court. Ah, those walls are at least 20 feet high and as smooth as glass. And see how they curve in at the top. Oui, je vois. I, I do not like this place, mes amis. It is too much like a prison yard. Monsieur! Ah. Look up there! Above us on that iron grating! Above the three men... On an open iron grating which juts out from a window of their chamber, Helen and Magra stand gazing down into the little court. From high above them, there appears a number of ghastly flying things, giant sword-billed pterodactyls. The ungainly monsters swoop directly down upon the two unsuspecting defenseless women. Magra! Helen! Get back inside that room! The client is too late! <laughs> 